Before you set up your limited company, watch this video to make sure you do it in the most tax beneficial way. So when it comes to setting up your company, it's usually pretty easy and straightforward, most people think. You can just go on company itself, set up your own company, all you need is your company name, details of shareholders, directors, put 10 or 100 uh, for the share capital, and that's it, pretty much job done. And a lot of the time, that is the quickest and easiest way to get a company set up a company's house, but very often it isn't the most beneficial way. And the reason for this is all around the share classes. So when you set up a normal limited company, it's usually got one ordinary class of shares. So 100 shares split between a couple of different shareholders, usually husband and wife, 50 shares each. They own a company, 50% each. And then as a result of that, when they sell the company, they'll both get 50% of the profit, their proceeds. When they take dividends out um, in equal shares, 50% will go on their tax return, 50% on the other person's tax return. And that's typically how a lot of companies are set up. But for tax purposes, this isn't the best way. So from an income tax perspective, having a company set up this way gives you pretty much no flexibility from an income tax perspective. Historically, when a company was set up this way, shareholders on the dividends would use dividend waivers effectively, which is where you would say, okay, we waive this dividend. In a husband and wife scenario, say for instance, the husband's earning more money than the, the spouse, then actually they're going to be paying 33.75% or 39% or so on those dividends, whereas the other spouse who's got their personal allowance available, no other income, actually they only pay 8.75% on that dividend income. So historically, you'd use a dividend waiver to basically the higher rate taxpayer waiver dividends they will go in the lower rate taxpayers tax returns but hmrc don't like this um basically it creates an element of bounty all of that kind of stuff the cases have gone through and as a result we always advise clients to not use dividend waivers unless it's absolutely necessary you can show that there's other dividends available to cover it um, because if not you can actually end yourself in hot water and basically have some pretty nasty tax consequences as a result of that. Instead, what we recommend is setting up a company with multiple different share classes. So again, from an income tax perspective, the way this would work is if you had multiple different share classes, say A and B shares, the husband has the A shares, the wife has the B shares, what this allows you to do is basically have complete flexibility over your dividend payments because you as a company, that the directors and shareholders of the company can vote a dividend on a particular share class. So you can say that, well, actually, the A share only has £20,000 worth of dividends for the period. The B share has £50,000 worth of dividends for the period. And that means that actually those 50,000 go on the lower rate taxpayers self-assessment, benefit from those lower tax rates and the higher rate taxpayer, um, you, you can play around with it so that you push them up to their basic rate band or they'll pay less tax at the higher rate than they would have if the company was set up in a simple way where those dividends would basically be split according to the actual shareholding. That's definitely one of the biggest benefits that we see on a yearly basis is the income tax benefits. And then the second benefit is just flexibility over capital growth. Um, because what we mean by this is, if you've got a company, most often a property company, some kind of family investment company, inheritance tax is always going to be a risk. Because with property companies, you don't get any business property relief, agricultural property relief. They're fully subject to inheritance tax at 40% in most cases. But what you can do is have different share classes and different capital rights at a later date. So you can basically put in hurdle rates into the articles of association and the share rights that say, us as the founding partners can only participate into capital up to say one million pounds. Then all future capital growth will go to the C, D, E, F, or whichever so on share classes. And as a result of this, those share classes don't belong to you as the, the taxpayer, the founder generation. They can be in trust or given directly to your children who will then benefit and basically be taxed on that capital appreciation when they come to sell the shares or when they pass on. But for now, it's completely skipped that initial generation where if the shares were just all in your name, ordinary shares, you'd be paying inheritance tax at God knows what rates because the entire value of the company would be taxed on you as it forms part of your estate. But by having those alphabet shares with the different dividend rights, different capital rights, you completely negated this. As a minimum, we'd always suggest having a company set up with those alphabet shares, even just for the income tax benefits. But if you are looking at building a large investment company, you've got a group company structure in place, looking at the inheritance tax aspects as well of those growth shares. They're called freezer shares and growth shares. The, the founder generation have freezer shares. Effectively, there's a convert to to freeze the value of their shares. The future generation get given or the, the sold to are uh, the growth shares because that's going to grow in value. So you want them outside of your estate. 
Setting this kind of thing up, you can't do it yourself. You often need tax advisors and solicitors to get this done right, make sure it's done in accordance with the law and will stand up if challenged by HMRC. The price varies. If you just want a simple company set up with just the variable share classes for the dividends, you're probably looking at a couple of hundred pounds. But for a full scale family investment company, different share classes for growth shares, freezer shares, potentially a trust structure as well, you'd be looking at up to £10,000 in that case. If you want any help with this or have any questions, drop it in the comments below. Book a call with JSM. We'd love to help. Bye for now, guys.